Well, this is Dr. Stan here at Radio Liberty, coming to you from the hills overlooking beautiful and picturesque Monterey Bay and, and bringing you the news behind the news, the story behind the story. Hoping to convince you that reality is usually scoffed at, that illusion is usually king. But in the battle for survival of Western civilization, it's going to be reality, not illusion or delusion, that's going to determine what the future will bring. And I have to remind you the views expressed here are not necessarily those of the owners, management, staff, sponsors, or supporters of the station you're listening to. They're my views. And for the next hour, they're going to be the views of Randy Engel. And I am deeply in, indebted to Randy for uh, calling my attention and may, providing us with uh, certainly uh, some amazing information. Now, basically, it's very seldom we have an opportunity to actually find out what the people on the other side are doing. Uh, certainly, we have uh, the, uh, the the writings of Professor Carol Quigley, who is associated with the people who rule the world. And uh, basically, I know what he said was true because I went back to uh, back to uh, Georgetown University. We offer an interview with Professor Quigley. We uh, we actually have all of his papers and going into the, how he actually got into their secret records and found out about their secret meetings as they were planning to take over the world. And certainly, there have been uh, certainly. Uh, a few other times when we've talked to people who had firsthand understanding of what was going on, Colonel Daniel Marvin, trained as an assassin by the uh, CIA, uh, being told, of course, that they had killed President Kennedy and why they killed President Kennedy. Uh, but the story you're going to hear this afternoon is something that Randy Engel got from a doctor in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a Dr. Dunnigan who back in 1969 had heard a talk by Dr. Richard Day, who was director of research for uh, of the uh, uh, Planned Parenthood, I guess, the medical director for Planned Parenthood, uh, back you know, prior to that in the nineteen, the late nineteen, uh, the sixties, and uh, I, if you want to understand anything going on today, you have to read what this is all. We have it in a transcript form. We have it in a, uh, in a four tape, a four CD set, a- and if you analyze what was said, it is the most amazing thing. How do we understand the, the, the contraction of our economy, the mass? of trade deficits we have? Well, it was all planned. How do we understand the terrorist attacks on America and how we have to uh, submit to all these uh, invasive uh, uh, manhandling there when we get to the airport or or be exposed to radiation? Why, the whole terrorist system, the terrorist attack on America was planned uh, back there in the 1960s. It is all planned. Randy Engel, that is one of the most amazing, uh, amazing uh, interviews of, of all the things we have. I think it's probably one of the most important for today. How did you ever happen to meet Dr. Dunnigan and get his and have him tell you his story? Well, Dr. Dunnigan was a uh, uh, a right to lifer here in the Pittsburgh area, and uh, so it, it was inevitable that we meet. And I had known him about three or four years, and I had often talked about uh, you know this. Uh, to use the uh, the expression, the, the new world order, and I think in the back of, of Dr. Dunnigan's mind, perhaps there was a little um, oh, uh, uh, doubt if you know, d- d- does the I mean, are there really people out there who are uh, uh, intent on um, on directing just about every uh, phase of of, uh, of living? And uh, so one day he asked me over to his um, his his uh, pediatrician's office, and we sat down. And he started to tell me about the speech of Dr. Richard Day. Now, Dr. Day was the former medical director of uh, Planned Parenthood, and um, he had come to Pittsburgh in uh, March of 1969. And uh, he was well-known. Dr. Day was well-known for his work uh, in the pediatric field, uh, neonatal care. So naturally, when they had this, uh, this um, uh, formal uh, meeting and he was the guest speaker, everyone assumed that he was going to talk about neonatal care. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. 
Well, this is Dr. Stan. Our guest this afternoon is Randy Engel, and Randy lives back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and so indeed sometime in the late 1980s or early, very early 1990s, why she had an opportunity to talk to a Dr. Dunnigan, and Dr. Dunnigan was a pediatrician in, in, in Pittsburgh, and uh, he began to tell her about a meeting he'd attended in 1969 where the speaker was Dr. Richard Day, the former medical director of Planned Parenthood. Oh, well, of course, so when Dr. Dunnigan, uh, upon me, when Dr. Dunnigan attended this meeting, why, uh, suddenly Dr. Day had said, there will be no recordings, there will be no notes taken, but That's I'm right. going to tell you what the future holds. Now, uh, basically, uh, Dr. Dunnigan was pro-life. He was uh, certainly a, a pediatrician. I, uh, the story was so incredible. I first heard these tapes many years ago, and I uh, I had to track Dr. Dunnigan down and find out if it was really true, because uh, certainly I have a certain responsibility to my listeners to be accurate. I listen to Dr. Dunnigan. I talked to him. I interviewed him. I believe he's telling the truth. But when did you actually record these interviews with Dr. Dunnigan, do you recall? Yes, it was uh, uh, the late 1980s. And I um, uh, I asked him if I could do a... Well, uh, let me backtrack a minute, uh, Stan. He... Um, he gave me, after this meeting with him, when he explained this 1969 uh, speech that Dr. Day had given him, um, I received two tapes. And I'll never forget, I'll, I'll never forget that moment because I, I took the tapes after hearing him discuss all the uh, information that Dr. Day had rattled off in his two-hour speech, and uh, I, I pocketed them, and then on the way home, um, I put in the tapes. Well, I have to tell you, I had a hard time keeping the car on the road. It was like uh, I had the same reaction you had, and that was, uh, <laughs> can this be true? Um, and I knew Dr. Dungan to be an honorable and, and a trustworthy uh, individual, but uh, as an investigative reporter, I felt that it was important that I do some tracking of my own. So I did go out and um, and uh, did some research on Dr. Day. Uh, oddly enough, although he was a director of Planned Parenthood for a medical director for um, quite a few years, there was actually very little in the Planned Parenthood library in New York City on Dr. Day, but I was able to get enough information, enough... Um, uh, of hold, hold, that, hold that thought. We're going to be back here in just a moment. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and Randy is simply saying that when she first heard this story, it is so incredible. And she uh, just wondered if it could really be true, and like myself, she wanted to be sure that uh, she wasn't uh, certainly being taken advantage of. Uh, but certainly she was able to find out that Dr. Richard Day had been the medical director of Planned Parenthood. And, of course, it, uh, but you pick up the story there. Well, what I noticed is that I was able to glean from the, the uh, text of some of his articles and um, some of the speeches that he had given previous to 1969. Uh, and what I found out, of course, was that there were, um, that he had used very similar language uh, to the uh, the talk that he gave in 1969, although I think the his uh, March 1969 talk on what he called the new uh, coming world, uh, new world system. Um, I think that probably was as, as detailed a, a discussion as, as he had ever given. Uh, nevertheless, I was able to confirm that, in fact, he did uh, give this talk, and I was able to confirm the, the title because uh, Dr. Dunnigan was good enough to provide a, um, a uh, program for me of, of that night's um, uh, activities, and I was able to do some follow-up. And, and what has happened over the years is that virtually everything that Dr. Day said would come to fruition has, in fact, uh, you know, become uh, almost a, a part of our, our daily lives. And at this point, 
uh, Dr. Stan, it probably would be good to start talking about, um, you know, some of his predictions. All right. Well, you uh, you pick up the story there because you know it so well, so much better than anybody else I know. Go ahead. Yes. Um, well, one of uh, uh, in addition to um, the, the specifics of this new uh, upcoming new world system, um, Dr. Day laid out um, some. Um, common premises that would dominate the, the system. But this and is, I think it's so important people understand, he was describing in 69 there was going to be this new world system, and we were going to do away with the old world system, as we certainly uh, destroyed the infrastructure of this country, transferred our, our industrial potential overseas. I mean, this is 1969. But you go ahead and tell the story. Well, uh, I think the uh, his initial remarks uh, were not any surprise to Dr. Dunnigan, who was sitting there, of course, uh, 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 taking notes on napkins, since it, it, Dr. Day said no one could record his talk. Um, and his opening theme was that the, in this new world, under this new world system, there would be sex without reproduction and reproduction without sex. And what he went on to explain was that um, through, and he, he mentioned specifically um, sex initiation or sex education programs in schools, these would be the vehicle by which um, uh, the, um, the young child and then the young adult and, and uh, uh, the grown woman or, or man um, their views on um, sex could be completely altered away from any connection between marriage and um, uh, and raise and having children and raising children. Rather, sex would be simply a vehicle for um, uh, and uh, almost like a, a, a form of uh, of entertainment. And the section with. Um, reproduction without sex, that had to do with um, his explanation of uh, in vitro fertilization in the laboratory and, uh, you know, the new techniques um, that would preclude uh, normal uh, marital conjugal um, relations so that um, there would be no connection. And that would be made possible, of course, through uh, contraception, through abortion, and finally through um, through sterilization. So, as I said, that was a major factor uh, in this coming new world system. And I asked myself, why, why would anyone want to promote promiscuity? Why would anyone want to destroy innocence? I mean, what's, what's the idea behind that? And what it became clear was that Individuals who are um, uh, who are trapped in the um, in the uh, uh, sexuality circle, um, who are uh, proficient in vice as opposed to proficient uh, proficiency in virtue, uh, these are people that are easily controllable and will not pro- pro- you know provide any opposition to the coming new world system. So, um, you know, here, here we have really a, a grooming of, of our young people uh, in, um, in amoral and immoral acts simply to be, uh, to, to serve the, the, uh, their new world masters. And I thought one of the interesting things, as I remember, and Chris is a long time ago, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically, of course, they wanted the sex education. So young girls, 13, 12-year-old girls, that get pregnant. And then, of course, what are the parents going to do? I mean, their child is pregnant. Well, they're going to have to support an abortion. After all, you wouldn't want to destroy this little girl's life. And so now the family is giving up their Christian concepts of you know, morality and saying, well, it's expedient. We'll 
we'll just go ahead and abort uh, abort the unborn child and to to save our daughter the embarrassment and the problems and and so now of course the families are beginning to shift in support of abortion uh, because of course well they had to do something because uh, you know their daughter is, is is pregnant and how diabolic it was how they would manipulate people you remember that part yes i do and what was very interesting about dr day's comments were were and he did this throughout his speech. He would say, um, uh, he would give, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, millions and millions of, chil- of children would be, unborn children would be aborted. Um, and that, uh, but, uh, but the, the, the good thing about it is, as a result of all these abortions, people would become accustomed to killing their own children, and therefore, um, again, the goal was to reduce population, uh, and you, you have to see abortion within this context uh, that is repeated throughout the day talk, and that is the necessity of reducing um, uh, population, meaning people, uh, to uh, what he would call sustainable um, entities. And of course, one of the most horrible things was the idea, and he said back in 69, we have treatments for cancer, but we're going to have to keep them locked up there in the basement of the Rockefeller Foundation. People are going to have to die of something. They might as well die of cancer. And ladies and gentlemen, they have had uh, knowledge on how to cure cancer for a long time, but these wicked and evil people uh, want cancer because, of course, it controls the population. And as he said, people are going to have to die of something. They might as well die of cancer. And if you've never seen anybody die of cancer, why you can't understand how horrible this is. But there really are people out there with connections to the highest level of our government who uh, have this philosophy. We're going to suppress the treatments uh, because they're going to have to die of something. Go ahead. It's, um, uh, it, you know, he... he, he um he mentions only one um, proper name throughout his entire talk, and so we he he didn't reveal um, you know the the men the the hidden faces uh, and so forth. But uh, he did mention the Rockefellers, and he mentioned them on at a number of, of times. Um, and I think it's important for your listeners to realize that this man was an insider. He was a part of the uh, Rockefeller clique, and um, he knew what was going on. And he knew what was going on. Obviously, uh, being with, associated with Planned Parenthood, he knew he knew all about abortion and sterilization and so forth. But as he started to talk, uh, it was revealed. For example, he said that um, uh, that society would be highly um, sexualized. In other words, um, clothing would be cut, such as to accentuate a certain uh, body parts. There would be um, the introduction of porn. Porn, you wouldn't have to go out to some slimy little uh, hole in the wall to watch porn flicks. You would be able to get them on your VCR, and um, everything would be shown. Everything imaginable and not imaginable, he mentioned, um, would come on your screen. And when I heard that, I thought that was really odd, because um, if your listeners try to remember what it was in 69, um, the the term, uh, you know, VCR, that that wasn't even um, in in the public consciousness yet. Yet, he knew it was already on the drawing board. Um, He uh, would talk about other items, uh, and Stan, since you mentioned it, um, I'm going to mention it, too, because it was so important. Um, It had to do with people's livelihood, and he made it quite clear Again, in relationship to um, a sustainable Earth, and uh, that um, we had enough pollution, and it was time for us to ship our heavy industry abroad. In other words, let some of the uh, less developed countries uh, uh, tackle the question of pollution. So he said the United States, this is in 1969, had been designated as a uh, technology and educational world center, um, and that our heavy industry would be shipped abroad. 
Um, of course, I'm from, you know, Pittsburgh, sitting here in Pittsburgh, um, Steel City. Well, our steel mills are all gone. Um, shortly after they made that comment about the steel industry leaving the states, sure enough, here in Pittsburgh, it was announced that the steel mills would be closing and, um, uh, and, uh, for, and other items. So, for example, the, the car industry, we would be losing. Hold our, that thought. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. Randy, go right ahead. Yeah, you know, we, we talk about this uh, this loss of, of uh, our uh, economic base, and Dr. Dun- uh, Dr. Day outlined step by step by step that we were going to be de-industrialized. He talked about the fact that um, the uh, our Declaration of Independence, uh, in other words, uh, uh, as a country that we would be independent in in um, in every way in terms of manufacturing, he said that was obsolete. We have now to to entertain a new declaration of interdependence, so that uh, countries would be assigned these these um, managers operating behind the scenes. Um, we we have been designated as a technological uh, educational um, country. Now I ask you, Stan, did you vote for that? I did, I know I I was never. It was never a ballot issue. Do you want to um, get rid of your uh, heavy industry and do you want to become this? No, of course not. But no. they knew exactly what they were doing. This was all carefully planned. Planned, and that's the key. Um, you know, now they don't plan everything to the, uh, you know, to the dot. What they do is they plan large uh, scopes of of um, of activities, uh, such as industrialization and shipping that abroad. I'm sure they had NAFTA it was probably written <laughs> very early and uh, and then given to. Um, to the congressmen and senators to uh, to pass this legislation and you know for our country, but so much of what passes for legislation these days um, is in fact it doesn't in fact start and is not beneficial to us. Uh, we're talking about benefic- uh, being beneficial to a world economy, and if it takes the United States has to sacrifice millions and millions of its jobs, well, you know. That's it, because that's the plan. And it is a plan. And really, of course, we talked about how they were going to get our automotive industry moved overseas, how we were going to intentionally build inferior cars that really could compete with the Japanese cars, how much they'd be much better. We would use plastic on our on our door handles and our window handles so they'd break off and fall off. And people would get angry at American cars and they'd want a Toyota car. They'd want a Japanese car because those cars were made solid and they would last so much longer. So this whole idea of, of shifting our automotive production to other countries uh, was really all planned. They knew exactly what they were doing back in 1969. It was just that the average American had no idea what was going on. Yeah, and you know, the the interesting thing about it is, as a kid growing up, I can remember um, looking at something, uh, you know, in the store, and if it said, made in Japan, my parents would make some remark of, that's junk. (laughs) I mean, that was the the whole thing, a car made in Japan, oh, that couldn't be very good. But the, the the this new world system has absolute control over the media and over, as I said, over the large um, industrial patterns of um, of you know how uh, how we grow as a, as a nation and um, through the media and hold that through- thought. Hold that thought. We'll be right back here. 
Well, this is Dr. Stan, and Sonny Randy simply talking about uh, this talk that Dr. Day gave, and we have the transcript, uh, the Dr. Dunnigan's uh, description of it. And what we're seeing today in the wave of globalization was all readily well planned back in 1969, shifting our automotive industry overseas, shifting our other industries overseas to the point where we would have no production here in the United States. We would simply be a technological uh, community and and production would be done in other nations. This was all planned. They knew exactly what they were doing. But, of course, what's going to happen uh, as far as all of our workers? Well, they're just out of work or we'll get them retrained. How are you going to train somebody who's 50 years old to become a computer technician? And then, of course, we don't produce any computers here in the United States. We don't have any electronic industry. We've shipped it all overseas along with our textile industry, along with our steel industry. It, all carefully planned. And, of course, increasingly you're going to see uh, oh, the other instrument that are made out of steel being made overseas as we simply reindustrialize America so we can lower the living standards here down. But you have to read what they were saying back in 1969. Nothing is happening by accident. It was all planned. But go right ahead, Randy. Well, I think one of... Uh, I, I know Dr. Dunnigan was uh, was deeply religious, and so... When uh, Dr. Day began to talk about what kind of religion we would get with this new world system, now um, he 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 would often make these um, throughout his speech. He made these uh, quips, and he said, "Well, you know, people need religion, so we're going to get give them religion." And uh, so Dr. Dunnigan, um, you know, started uh, to uh, this. This was a a point of. That was of special interest to him. And Dr. Day said that there would be people need religion, so we're going to give them a new religion. But this would be a religion without dogma and without morals. It would be the kind of religion that would make you feel good inside, but be, would be totally um, vacant in terms of, of, uh, of uh, you know, what the beliefs were, and um, any any morals that would go along with it. And if you look around and you see what Americans tolerate today, that was unthinkable in the late 1960s. And, of course, immediately one would think of, of the killing of unborn children. Uh, abortion was unthinkable, that the Supreme Court would... Um, uh, would uh, uh, approve of of uh, this killing, uh, but Dr. Day said, 1969, he said that abortion would be legalized and that it would also be tax funded. So this was all on the drawing board, and uh, uh, you know, n- no surprise, it it, uh, it was just planned. That way. But of course, the other thing is that they were even talking about the, the terrorism that was going to come. I mean, who back in 1969 was thinking about a world terrorist movement? How about this whole thing is instigated? I would just comment, incidentally, anybody who wonders who's funding the Al Qaeda who's killing the American boys? You go up on the internet and type in uh, the Bell, let's see, Belfast Telegraph, Belfast uh, Telegraph, Lord Black, and then uh, funding terrorists. And uh, on the 4th of November of this month, Lord Black got up in the House of Parliament, and you can actually see this on some of the websites up there, and said, you know, I've been funding, spending billions of dollars to terrorists throughout the world. Yes, we funneled billions of pounds uh, to the Irish Republican Army and, and billions of pounds to uh, the terrorists in North Africa. Of course, he didn't mention that South al-Qaeda, who's killing our boys and uh, over there. I mean, somebody's got to fund al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Did you ever wonder who's funding them over there in Afghanistan, the killing boys? Why, it's all coming from the Bank of London. That's at least part of it. I'm sure we have uh, our own organizations. But here's a, a peer, uh, you know, a, a British uh, uh, lord. Lord Black is his name. Anybody wants to see the article, you can't get it. We'll be glad to send you a copy if you contact us. And just ask for the uh, article on Lord Black or funding the terrorists. Uh, 
here we have a world terrorist movement. We've got to have everybody patted down at the airport. We've got to have, you know, these CT scans to protect us from terrorism. And who's funding it? Well, Lloyd Black says the uh, the Bank of London. He says, don't don't uh, call the police. I mean, I'm just doing what I'm I, I'm told to do. We're simply uh, we're funding money to the terrorist. I'm not a money launderer. I'm a money washer. Was his term. Uh, uh, so basically, everything is planned, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing is that appears to be. Everything is illusion and delusion. And back here in 1969, a Dr. Day, uh, who is one of the insiders, is talking about uh, uh, this coming uh, uh, terrorist attack on the West. you want to pick up on that thought? Yes. Now, um, uh, uh, again, he said some of the most outrageous um, comments. He said that the, there would be a, a growing terrorist movement, and he said that would largely be um, confined to Europe. But, he said, that if it was necessary, uh, they could bring terrorism to our own shores. Oh, shucks, and what do you know why? We've got terrorism <laughs> right on our own shores. That's why they've got to just uh, uh, search you all the time. We'll be right back. Yeah. Well, Randy, you go right ahead. Well, um, I wanted to uh, add that um, Dr. Day said that Americans would be willing to give up their freedoms for additional security. In other words, the people behind the scenes who are doing all this manipulation, they know what makes people tick. If they want to achieve a particular goal, um, they know how to manipulate public opinion in such a way as to achieve that goal. They are they they can manipulate the mass media and they can properly convince the American people to do anything they want. And I think that's exactly true, and we see this, how they're manipulating us now. They can get us angry, they can get us happy, they can entertain us, but people don't understand everything is manipulation. Certainly our television programs, many of them are designed just to confuse you or to frighten you or to entertain you so that you won't have any thoughts about what's going on. But what instantly, I'd love to watch History and, and uh, the Channel and Discovery Channel because all of their programs, some of them are very interesting, but they always will come back to global warming. Oh, global warming is so real. Everybody knows global warming is real. Watch the History Channel programs on science and, and nature and Sydney and watch the programs on Discovery, and they'll always get around to global warming. Why do they want to get around to global warming? Because it's a fraud, but they want to convince you of something that isn't true. But if something is said often enough by enough people, most people will not challenge it. After all, how could everybody be wrong be, and me be right? They must be right and I must be wrong. So I'm going to believe what they want me to believe. I'm going to believe in global warming. And uh, But the television is used to, to form our tastes, to create our ideas, to form what we believe in. Go right ahead, Randy. Well, um, I'm sure uh, when uh, some of our listeners heard that the CIA had funded Gloria Steinman and the Women's Liberation Movement. Hold that thought. Now, hold that thought. We'll be back in just a moment here. Well, this is Dr. Stan and Sydney. Um, uh, Randy was just saying how uh, the CIA funded uh, Gloria Steinman and the Women's Liberation Movement, but the CIA has funded so many things. They've funded the communist movement here. Uh, they got funded the, so many of the revolutionary movements, the radical left, was all funded by one or another government agency. We certainly have, uh, uh, we certainly have uh, books written by Wesley Swearingen, who was a member of the, uh, the FBI for 23 years, and uh, FBI Secrets 
tell us how they were they were funding all sorts of these radical movements uh, and uh, but that's a different subject basically our guest today is Randy Engel we're talking about a four tape set we have it's called the new order of the barbarians the new order of the barbarians the interviews with Dr. Dunnigan who in 1969 had heard the talk given by Richard Day uh, the director of Planned Parenthood or the former director of Planned Parenthood medical director of Planned Parenthood telling about the plan of the insiders for the world, how they were going to send our industrial base overseas, which they have, how they were going to send our automotive production overseas by creating and building inferior cars here in the United States so the Japanese cars would be better, how they were already planning at that time on the possibility of bringing uh, the threat of terrorism to the United States you know, as a means of controlling the American people. And he goes right down the line in 1969 talking about how abortion is going to be legalized, sex education is going to change the moral fabric of our society. You'll be able to watch a television in your in your own living room. For the comfort of your living room, you won't have to go out someplace to watch pornography. The whole changing of the structure of our society, it really is an amazing thing. Randy, before we go on, would you like to tell our listeners how they can get in touch with your ministry? Yes, um... If, and I hope they certainly are, even if they doubt anything that we've said, go to uh, our website, which is www.uscl.info. That's uscl.info. That is the site of the U.S. Coalition for Life. And they, if they go over to the research library, they will find the transcript that you mentioned. Um, I don't think the transcript is as um, effective in driving home the reality of this new world system and, and its meaning um, for us as Americans as the um, as the, the um, uh, videotapes and excuse me as the um, uh, cassette tapes and the. Uh, CDs are, but I think it, it will give them a start uh, in, in trying to get a, a, a handle on, uh, you know, what what this new world system means to them, what it means to their family, what it means to their uh, livelihood, the economy, uh, what it means to their religious beliefs. Uh, what it means to their, um, you know, to to um, to morals, to every aspect of of uh, living. Because when Dr. Day used the term population control, as I came to understand, what he's essentially talking about is people control, the control of the uh, of the way that we live. And, of course, the way that we die, because uh, while he was pushing birth control at one end, he mentioned that uh, there would be a um, an increase in uh, euthanasia, that is, the, the killing of the handicapped and the elderly. And, in fact, he had a whole scenario built around what he called the demise pill. And this would be the pill that you would take at, a, at having reached a certain age, and everyone would wish you well, including your family members, and uh, they would give a party for you, a going-away party, and then you would go and, um, you know, you would essentially be uh, humanely killed. And when he was talking, it, uh, and uh, as I recall, there's a, a, a movie called Saw, uh, Saw Green, and uh, in that movie, it, there was pretty much the same thing, that if you reached a certain age, that you would uh, be sent to a, a happy hunting ground. Uh, they would uh, euthanize you uh, on the table as, as you were watching beautiful um, uh, pictures and listening to, uh, you know, Beethoven's uh, symphonies. Well, today we call it end-of-life care, we call it hospice, but they send people to hospice who don't have cancer. There are people who put on end-of-life care who do not have cancer, uh, but they made the decision, the doctors have made the decision, or perhaps the families have made the decision, that it's time for them to go, and they simply start them on an IV morphine drip, and that's the end of them. Uh, I'm not talking about something imaginary. I'm talking about things going on across America today, and nobody is talking about it. They call it... 
hospice. They call it end-of-life care, but they're not necessarily have terminal cancer. They just put them on end-of-life care because, well, it, uh, basically Medicare is not going to pay for these patients going back in the hospital. And if the doctor is spending too much money, the hospital gets paid a certain amount of money, whether they're one day or 100 days. And after a while, while the hospital puts pressure on the doctor, and the doctor's got to get rid of that patient. And if they can't go home, why they go on end-of-life care? This is not imaginary, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening in America today. And where is the outcry from our doctors? Well, they're trapped in a system, and the hospitals are putting pressure on them, and they've got to get rid of these patients because they're going to bankrupt the medical system. And if you care about the medical system, why we've got to just uh, uh, prevent excessive u- overutilization like people in the hospitals for a long period of time trying to save their lives. So of these things, so many of the things that Dr. Day talked about are coming to pass today. I telephone number if you have a question for Randy, one triple eight two four liberty. One triple eight two four liberty or four six four eight two nine five. One triple eight two liber one triple eight two four liberty four six four eight two nine five. Could it really be that everything going on today is planned? Well, this is why this is such an important uh, four tape set, and this is why really the transcript is so vitally important. You can get it at Randy's website, or you can get the transcript from my ministry. Um, if you have access to the computer, go there once again. What's the website, Randy? It's www U-S-C-L dot info, I-N-F-O, and that's the website for the U.S. Coalition for Life. The U.S. Coalition for Life. Well, if you're out there in the listening audience and you have a question, maybe you don't believe this is true. Well, I, I will tell you that I certainly talked to Dr. Dunnigan before he passed away, and uh, and uh, he, he, he wasn't that old a man when he passed away, was he? Uh, no, he was in his late seventies. So um, it was a, you know, it was a great loss. Um, so I, I'm glad he uh, he made the tapes. It's kind of his, um, his the legacy that he has left behind. Uh, and there is no place on the web I, in which you can, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the new world order, um, but this is an actual concrete. Um, statement made by an insider, very much at the level of, of uh, you know, that, that uh, Quigley was able to talk about uh, so well um, after his investigation of the uh, the movers and the shakers uh, of the Eastern establishment. That's that's what the term, one of the terms he used when he was describing the uh, uh, upcoming New World system. And, of course, this whole idea of the world order has been around for a long time. And, of course, they're using the financial and the military power of the United States to bring about the world government. Why do you think we have troops stationed in well over 130 nations throughout the world? We are occupying those countries, and those countries will do what they're told to because we have our troops stationed there. And the same thing is why we have 720 military bases throughout the world. Who are we protecting ourselves against? We're not protecting ourselves against anybody. Basically, what we're doing is is actually, of course, uh, this is the basis by which we control other nations. When you have your military forces there, why they will do what you want to. And certainly we rig elections. If you haven't read the book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, uh, John Perkins' book, Confessions of Economic Hitman, he was part of this. He, he uh, talked about how they simply sent in their assassins to kill world leaders who didn't want to go along with what was going on. It must be true because the State Department put up pages there and uh, just uh, attacking John Perkins, saying what an irresponsible person he was. And all it did was get more copies of his book sold. And because he wrote another book, America's Secret Empire. We do have an empire, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about the New World Order. And there's not one person in a thousand America who really understands what's going on. Our telephone number, one triple eight two four liberty 464 Our guest is Randy Engel, who is kind enough to allow us to read produce the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tapes that uh, she had got from Dr. Dunnigan, and then, of course, we have my own interview with Dr. Dunnigan, as he tells this incredible story of what he had actually heard back in 1969, as the whole future of the world was laid out, and he was listening, and, and of course, Dr. Day kept saying, you know, people 
people don't ask enough questions. I mean, they, they don't, I mean, it should be so obvious what's going on, but nobody questions. And it was almost as if uh, he lamented the fact that this was coming to pass and nobody seemed to care in 1969. Well, um, let's go uh, on to another area which I think will be of interest uh, to the listener, and that is his um, whole scenario on on banking. Um, he was he made it very clear that we would have uh, at the time that he was talking, credit cards were just coming into being. But he said, of course, we wouldn't, uh, less and less would we um, be dealing with uh, with cash. We might uh, carry some change for bubble gum. But um, actually, he said, uh, everything from groceries to clothing and so forth would be put on. Uh, and he mentioned two things. He mentioned credit cards. Well, that wasn't too surprising because they were just coming into vogue. But he also mentioned debit cards. Now, debit cards, if you recall, came in much later, but he knew in 1969 that, I mean, he called it by the the uh, the very correct name. He didn't say something general. He said debit cards. And so the, um, you know, if we look at the, the whole um, uh, banking system, uh, that was all, that was all on the drawing board, um, and if I don't care if I repeat myself, and it's planned that way. Um, and somebody is back there planning all of these things. Let's go to Dave, who's calling us from Wisconsin. Hi, Dave. you have a question for our guest? Uh, yeah, I was wondering, uh, is uh, Dr. Day still around, or did he No, die? He, he died many years ago. Do you remember when he died? Uh, uh, let me see. Um no, that would have been. He, I think it, it was uh, probably in the early um, uh, 1980s. Um, if you would care to uh, uh, to contact either Doctor Stan or myself, uh, we'd be happy to give you the details of his death. And I do recall, though, that he was buried in uh, in one of the Rockefeller cemeteries. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? It sure is. And in fact, I think you can certainly look it up on the internet. I looked it up, and he may be listed in Wikipedia, as I remember. I could be wrong on that, but I, it doesn't mention when his death is on the internet. You can find that. And that's Richard Day. Anything else? Uh, well, I was just wondering also, is there anybody, so to speak, that's maybe taken over as a spokesman for, you know, like he was, or uh, are they all kind of keeping it? Uh, more quiet. He never should have told what he did. What I mean, it's sort of like Lord Black getting up in the in the Parliament <laughs> just earlier this month and saying, "Yeah, I'm funding the terrorists throughout the world. I'm funding the terrorists." You're not supposed to say that sort of thing. I wouldn't want to be the fellow who has the life insurance on on Lord Black. Mm, that's true. Okay. Anything else, okay. Dave? No, thank you very much. God bless. You're and uh, certainly, uh, but uh, they managed to keep this information fairly secret. I mean, certainly, Randy's got these tapes out all across America. We've tried to get them out, but uh, really, because the thing that shocks me uh, mainly is that most people, even though they hear the story, don't want to get the tapes. They don't want to get the transcript. Uh, they're just too busy living the good life. Well, the good life's coming to an end, ladies and gentlemen, because of course, if you read what Richard Haas. What Mortimer Zuckerman, both trilateralists, say in this last month, why, of course, we're moving into a period of austerity, we're moving into a period of lower living standards, and they're going to simply uh, destroy the lives of most of the people, at least in this country, as we move from a, th a middle class to a lower class society. We'll be two classes, the, the, the elite and then the, uh, the common people. Go right yes, ahead. Yes, we'll be the drones. And they know exactly what they're doing. And the information is there. I mean, there have been people on the other side, like Dr. like uh, uh, Professor Quigley, who came out and really laid it all out in his books. In the two books, they were suppressed for many periods of time. Then Dr. Dunnigan has put this out. We can give a half a dozen people who've come from the other side to tell you exactly what's going on. Uh, but, of course, the average person... Uh, is totally unaware of it, or if he is, he said it couldn't be true, because that you're suggesting is a conspiracy, and there's no conspiracies, and yet 
The word conspiracy simply means a couple of people getting together and plotting in secret. And there have been conspiracies down through the, through the ages. If you go to the Holy Scriptures and, and get out your concordance and look up the word conspiracy, they use it over and over again. I figure if the word's good enough for God, it's good enough for us. Go right ahead, Randy. Well, um, you mentioned, um, you know, the, the, the tapes and, and the text. Um, it would be very good. I, I know that there are many um, of your listeners who belong to uh, Bible-based groups. They belong to book clubs. They talk among themselves, and I think that if they, even if they can't get the, the, the discs or the CDs or, or get those later, at least look at the transcript. Look at the transcript and circulate parts of it among your friends and start talking about, um, about the issues uh, that affect your life and those of your children. If you have any, any um, uh, compassion at all for the future, uh, which is our children, uh, you need to get and to be informed. You need to know how our government works. Our government no longer works by the ballot box. Our government is uh, ruled from afar. Uh, they give us our, the legislation that are, is necessary. They gave us NAFTA. They gave us all these other de-industrialization uh, pieces of legislation. Uh, those didn't originate with uh, our Congress. They came from uh, outside, and they are actually imposed. And Go right ahead. Well, I think uh, Dr. Day made it clear, and he said that people don't understand how government works today. In other words, um, people don't have any appreciation of the uh, the way politics can be manipulated, um, the way that public opinion can be manipulated. Um, and the answer, of course, is if you don't like being manipulated, then you need to cut off the source of the manipulation. Mm. And that is, of course, the, 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 one of the uh, crux of the problem is that do people want to cut themselves off from this poison? Hold that of, thought. Hold that thought. We'll be back in a moment. Go ahead and, and uh, go right ahead and finish your thought, and then we have Gloria calling from Washington. Well, um, I just remember that uh, the POWs during the Korean War, one of the strategies they used it and, and were able to, some of these POWs were able to survive, is they broke their eardrums. In other words, they became immune from the uh, the, her, the verbal harassment of, uh, of their interrogators. And it's the same with us. We've got to cut ourselves off from being manipulated in, in every way and turn to information sources that are um, reliable and um, yeah, and truly, and uh, which tell the truth. Amen to that. Well, let's go to Gloria, who's calling from Washington. Hi, Gloria. How are you doing? Well, hello. I just am really enjoying your speaker tonight, and I just wanted to share quickly that I've seen some terrible things with hospice. I'm not saying that the nurses are not compassionate, but their plan is to come into your home or into the nursing home and to give large doses of morphine. I've seen that several times with different people I know, and I actually, I think, saved my dad's life from an overdose, and the PDR, actually, you know, physician's desk reference, uh, said that he should not be taking any morphine with his COPD, and so I uh, actually called the physician who admitted uh, that that's what hospice does. They give morphine. That's right, and, that, and that's how they kill the people. And I, exactly. I would do that, I uh, out, Gloria. I made a lot of family members angry, but I think I saved my dad's life for several more months because I intervened, and that's what we have to do. We have to stand up for truth. And a lot of even Christians are sucked into thinking hospice is so wonderful, and it's a killing machine in so, some cases. Another thing I've seen, they'll give people... Uh, some kind of drugs that make them really excited and out of control in a nursing home setting. And then, you know, it's just, oh, it's just terrible. And then all of a sudden they, they, 
they give them the morphine that really calms them down, and then they die. And I've seen that happen several times, too. So we, I just really appreciate the fact that she brought that up. And are you familiar with Ron Panzer, Hospice Patients Alliance? No, I'm not. Oh, he's a wonderful Catholic that started this. He was a hospice nurse. And he has done a lot to expose. Why don't you call me off the air and get me the details? Maybe we get him okay. on. I'd love to get him on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Thanks so much, Gloria. Well, I guess. And, uh, Stan, I would mention at this point, if you've got a living will, it's a death warrant. Get rid of your living will and get a pro-life uh, will that will um, give you the life support and the uh, the treatment that you need when you are in critical care. I think that's an excellent point. Now hang on there. We'll be back in just a moment here. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and uh, certainly uh, Randy Engel is just commenting. If you have a living will, get rid of it. Get a pro-life will. You can get that through her organization. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they know exactly what they're doing, but they don't want you to know exactly what they're doing. That's what the living will is all about. Only it's not a living will. It's really a, a deadly will. Well, Randy, we're out of time. God bless, and thank you so very much for being with us. I think it's such an important subject. I hope everyone will go to your website and pull down uh, the the uh, the transcript of the new order of the barbarians it's the most amazing information you'll ever read god bless thanks so much god bless bye-bye bye-bye okay fine if you're out there in the listening audience we certainly hope that maybe you'll want to get this now you can get it off of randy's website you can get it from us but we got it all nicely bound in a little booklet and uh, so we have to charge for it uh, let me suggest you get the tapes and you get the transcript and you read it and you read it and you reread it and then you study it and then you have our permission to go ahead and copy of it <coughs> and get the information out across America. We want the people to know that everything is going according to plan, and there is a master plan. Certainly, if you've never heard of my, my inter- the interview we have, it's not an interview I did with, with the Professor Quigley, but an interview that we have with Professor Quigley. Uh, you know, as he talks about it, these people who rule the world, how they suppressed his book, about the, the, the emblem on the back of the dollar bill, the, uh, the pyramid cap by the all-seeing eye. And as he said, these crazy right-wingers, they want to tell me that uh, that's the, uh, the uh, symbol of the Illuminati. He says it's been around for 6,000 years. Well, uh, he's absolutely right. It's been around for at least four, well over 4,000 years. It's the emblem of the ancient mystery religions that sprung up after Nimrod, of course, uh, uh, failed in his effort to uh, you know, build the Tower of Babel. And, of course, it was this uh, idea of fulfilling Nimrod's dream of a, a one-world government under uh, under a one-world leader. And that's, what, of course, what Plato wrote about. They were all involved. If you haven't read my book, Brotherhood of Darkness, you need to get it, you need to read it. And then, of course, the information is all there. I uh, Certainly, you can get our information on the occult hierarchy. There are three pamphlets, about 150 pages, introducing to this, you can get uh, William Still's excellent book, The New World Order, The Ancient Plan of Secret Societies, because that's what this world government is all about. And then certainly you ought to get uh, the four-tape set, The New Order of the Barbarians, and of course you can get oh, then uh, the uh, transcript, or you can get them both together. But you need to understand, it's very, very rare that uh, somebody on the other side ever comes forward and tells us exactly what the plan is, but you'll read the plan right here. And I believe this is accurate. I interviewed Dr. Dunnigan before he passed away, and his information, I believe, is valid. Our telephone number, of course, is one. 800-544-8927. 800-544-8927. Our webpage is radioliberty.com. That's radioliberty.com. I would mention that we are primarily listener supported. And if you are out there listening to our programs and you agree certainly that uh, there is a problem and you'd like to join the Radio Liberty family of supporters and help us support the 60 outlets we have every week. Why give us a call? Because uh, your financial contribution will help us. We're behind for the year, and if it would like to end the year, uh, certainly uh, out of the red. So if you can give us a hand, 1 800 544 and if. 8927 1-800-544-8927. And if you're not in a position to help, then please pray for Radio Liberty, for our provision and for our protection. 
We do have, of course, this great new DVD by our friend Lynn Marzulli on the UFOs and about the, um, the alien implants, the interviews with Dr. Roger Lair, who's actually removed 16 of them. It's called The Watchers, and uh, fascinating information on the cattle mutilations. You'll see them. You'll see the UFOs. Or you'll see the alien implants. That's The Watchers. You'll want to get the DVD. The Secret of Oz. That's The Secret of Oz. Uh, goes in the background of the... Uh, the uh, oh, the Wizard of Oz, and of course the whole story was a metaphor. It was an allegory of the banking system. How you also didn't want to get my talk on the financial Armageddon, how they brought on this whole financial collapse. It comes with an excellent syllabus. Please pray for America, pray for revival, but pray for radio liberty for our provision and for our protection. And so until tomorrow at the same time, may the Lord be with you.